Okay, hello everyone. I really, really hope that everyone is staying well and staying safe um, in these <laughs> crazy times. I've not made a soap for a while. Um, I think it's been about four weeks. Yeah, about a month. Um, and that's not because of what's been going on. It's uh, more to do with um, I, the fact that I have a, I have a eye condition and um, it flares up every now and then and I've had it for a very long time and um, when it flares up I'm unable to see and I'm in a lot of pain so I really can't be around soap and you know sodium hydroxide and things like that it's just uh, it'd be very stupid because um, it'd be very dangerous so I took a so I always take a break from soaping and um, I kind of had to take a break from most things because of the lack of eyesight. I can't really do even other things like accounts, and um, and it's not it doesn't usually last that long. It's usually about um, about a week or something. But for some reason, the one that when I when it flared up in February, it. Um, it lasted for three weeks, which is like the first time that's ever happened. I don't know why it lasted for so long. Um, so I was, I'm really behind in a lot of things. And then I can't really do anything, can't really even watch, you know, anything. Usually if you're in bed, you can watch the movies. I can't do that. And um, when I've kind of, you know, when it's died down now and I'm feeling, um, you know, good enough to like come in and work, there's so many things to do. And uh, this is a soap that um, I actually, well, let me see, what was the last soap I made was Coco Noir. Actually, no, I made um, made another soap after that called Plum Noir, and it was a mess. Uh, lots of things went wrong, and I just, I didn't upload the video of it or anything like that. So, and just before my eye flared up, I had done the prep work for this soap. This soap is called Honey Noir. I had like mixed all the oils, done my lye, everything, and then it's actually everything's been lying here for a month, and everything just slid, re solidified. <laughs> I mean, my I really hope everything's okay. I don't see any issue with the lye being left out for so long. My oils obviously re solidified, so I've um, heated them up again, and everything else should be okay. I didn't add any water. This is um, the slurry I'm going to make for one of the swirls. It's like a, the charcoal and. Um, Cocoa powder slurry that I uh, that I used in Coco Noir. Um, I really liked that shade, and um, I'm going to use it as a swirl. And thankfully, I hadn't put the water in this; otherwise, it would have gone mouldy by now. So I'd left it dry. So I've just put the water in it now to get ready. I've got my. I had everything prepared in terms of this is a mould I'm going to use. This is a brambleberry mould, and I've got bubble wrap at the bottom, and I've got a bit of. Uh, gold mica and oil just kind of dotted around and on top of that I sprinkled a bit of biodegradable gold glitter and I've got this section that I am going to then put on top once I've put the soap in so I'm quite excited about that that's a bit of a new one um, so I'll talk about the actual oils I've got a lot of raw organic honey in this like a lot um, you could probably see a little bit at the bottom because I had to um, I had to reheat it and as well as that I've got a lot of beeswax in this. Let me just see what else I've got in here. Uh, yeah, so I do coconut olive oil, rice bran, palm, shea butter and sunflower in this one. And then I've got the raw organic honey. Um, the beeswax and then I've got um, some gold mica for a swirl. I've got this yellow mica um, this in camera. Yeah, this yellow mica for um, the main base. So I'm gonna use that as a main base. And then I've got some gold mica in oil so that I'm gonna sprinkle on top uh, in the same way that I've done at the bottom so just to give a nice kind of effect. Hope it turns out well. 
Um, my previous soap, the Plum Noir, the one that I've not shown, is just, it turned out really bad because I used a natural um, colourant called Alkanet Root. And I've used that a few times before and it's come out really nice and purple. And I wanted that soap to be purple um, because obviously it's Plum Noir and it's a, you know, a plummy shade. But for some reason it... <laughs> It morphed into like a really weird. At the time, I was um, soaping it. Morph, it morphed into a really weird um, teal blue shade. Actually, that was quite quite a nice shade at the time. If it stayed that shade, I wouldn't have minded so much. But then it morphed into a jungle green, and then it's gone into this kind of muddy brown, dirty purple shade that is just. I don't know. I wasn't too pleased with it, so I'm not going to. I might use it as a soap that I add in as a freebie if anyone purchases from the Noir range but I don't think I want it to be a part of the Noir range. So that, I forgot to show you but that um, that lye water was very cold, like very cold, I think it was 13 degrees celsius and because I, I heated these oils up these were about 40 degrees celsius and 40 degrees Celsius is actually a lot hotter than I usually soap up because I'm um, because I've got beeswax in it. I don't want it to go too cool, to cool down too much. Sorry, because it just um, I kind of the beeswax um, re-solidifies um, very quickly, so I don't want that to happen. So this seems quite nice. Oh, I didn't even speak about my fragrance. Oh, this is this is gorgeous. This is um, a scent that's got bits of um, I feel like woody notes that are sweet and a very honey-like tone throughout. It's very it's very woody and honey with hints of some kind of sweet citrus. It's a fragrance oil. I think it's called dark. Dark Honey by Candle Shack and it's very very nice. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. Put this down here. Okay. Right, I'm not going to put anything that's going to fall because when I was making Plum Noir so many things were happening wrong. I actually dropped my stick blender and I made a mess on the floor and the walls everywhere. It's not nice. Let's separate these out now. Um, so this is going to be one of these is going to be a gold swirl, and one is going to be that charcoal brown swirl. And then the main base is going to be yellow. Okay, so I'll get this, my yellow maker, main base. I'm going to add the fragrance in last. Uh, I'll make the bigger swirl. It's a bigger swirl. They're both about the same size, to be honest. Um, I want to make that the gold one. Okay, and I'll make this one. I don't want to put all that in. I think that should be enough. I'll make that one the charcoal brown. There we go. It's a wee bit of a new angle. I've put that tripod a wee bit higher, so I just hope everything comes in. I know this is the kind of area <laughs> where it's aimed at, so. Try to be aware of that and keep that in the frame. Hmm, very nice. Okay, so this is the gold swirl. Yeah, I think that 
was enough. I wouldn't put more than that in. Right, I'm just going to give that a quick wash. So I'm going to add a bit of fragrance to all three of these and blend it in with my spatula before I pour. I still don't know if I'm going to do, I think I might do an in the pot swirl just so it's easier for me to pour. It's very thick. Come on, get it, get it. Uh, should be fine, just get it as even as possible and then get some of this on the top before I do the gold mika. Just so there's a lot more gold on top than there is the dark swirl. Because I like that. I want the dark to be a wee bit on top, but mostly inside. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if it sticks up too much because I'm going to push everything down when I put the bubble wrap on top. So. It's not, I'm not too worried about moving too fast. Right, too slowly. <laughs> okay. Um. I get most of my mikas and my um, Glitters from Soap Kitchen. Just sprinkle. Actually, I might put the more glitter on after I've used the chopstick. So, tamp it down as much as I can to get it fairly flat and then swirl. I mean, that swirl doesn't matter, I just want it to kind of be a bit even because the effect on top is um, ultimately going to be the beeswax um, the beeswax effect from the bulb wrap and I don't want to go do overkill with the glitter but I've got a feeling that when I take the bubble wrap off quite a bit might come off with it so, let's tap and, oh, oh come on, so press it down firm enough to get the effect on. Very nice. Okay, let's just clean up the edge here. I'm actually quite excited to see how this turns out when I cut it. Okay, I'll see you soon for the cut. Thank you.
Okay, welcome back everyone. It's the next day and I'm going to unmold to see how this came out. I'm very, very excited actually. Not made like a fancy soap like this for a while. Okay, so just double check it's in frame. Yeah, I, I thought that the glitter might kind of disappear under the bubble wrap, but that's how it's come out, which is quite nice. I'm quite excited, excited to put it and see what's inside. I'm going to use my Bud Hafner Log Cutter. Log Splitter. Um, this is like an absolute square, and I'm going to cut it three pieces that way, and then once that way to make my bars. Oh, I forgot about the one underneath. Oh, how do I get this one off? Mm, okay. Right. I think I'm going to pinch the corner here and then pull it away. I'm going to get my knife. So we are self-isolating our family because we have two high-risk patients in the household. So I come straight to work and go straight back. And I don't go anywhere else. Corner. <laughs> That's a bit of a uh, bit of the bubble wrap effect on the side as well, which is quite cool. Right. This fits up here. I wasn't sure, like when I when I found out about all this after my eye erosion calmed down and I was able to watch the news and stuff I just, I wasn't 100% sure how to take it all I wasn't, like, I kept thinking that is this a bit of an overreaction by everybody and um, because you heard a lot of people saying oh, it's not, it's not worse than like the common flu and um, but I think, what was it, I, I I was watching a Joe Rogan podcast with, I think it was Michael Osterholm, but he was basically a, an expert in these kind of infections. And after watching that, I thought, you know what, this is quite serious. Well, we should be taking it a little bit more serious and careful. And since then, I think we've all been kind of, you know, self-isolating and not mucking about in that regard. Okay, so this is the bottom bit and so as <laughs> the indentations are deeper because of all, obviously the all, whole weight of the soap was on top of this. So, oh, I like that. I like the deeper indents. Look at that, that is pretty cool. So that you get the indents here, but they're not as deep because I pressed them down with my fingers. And um, obviously there's not, you know, not too much weight there. But that's nice. It looks like a, one of those really um, browned, like really dark brown kind of honeycombs that you get from some beehives. Very nice. Okay, let me bring my cutter over. Check it's in frame. Yeah, that's fine. So how do I cut this? I'm gonna cut this. So I want some of these bits on every bar. So I'll cut it this way. Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay.
Ooh, wow. I like. Oh, I've got that honey thing. Sometimes honey leaks a wee bit, but that's fine. Not leaks, kind of sweats out a wee bit. But very nice. I like that. turned out. Pretty cool. Okay, so I'm just going to grab a towel here and I want something just to be underneath when I cut these. Just try to get it in halfway. A slightly different shape but it will be around the same because these, these are a wee bit thicker this way. They're the same width and um, slightly shorter but thicker that way. And I'll just do the rest of these. one more batch and then I was meant to have the gnaw range up by the end of March but I've still got to make one more because of the disaster that happened with the plum gnaw and I've not got any more of that fragrance oil left and I'm gutted because it was such a nice fragrance oil. It was a ble it was a, like a really deep rich plum scent um, but I've got another uh, scent that I really like and it's called um, it's like a pomegranate berry, shape, uh, berry type scent and I'm going to make that into a pomegranate nor. And once I've got all three soaps made, I will put them up on the website. And it's probably going to be the start of April now. But there we go. Okay, thank you very much for watching.